is Michelle Levan, and I own Multilingual Word, a family-owned business of 20 years working in the interpreter field. We contract with numerous hospitals and clinics in Minnesota to provide medical interpreters to a population of non-English speaking patients in over 100 languages, a vast number of whom are enrolled in medical assistance or Minnesota care. We are not opposed to efforts to enhance the quality of interpreter services. In fact, I am a long-standing member of the ISG and have been involved with its training committee for the past several years as a former chair and a current member, working to improve and expand training opportunities for interpreters in Minnesota. We are concerned with this bill, however, which was developed without the input of the many independent contractor interpreters that we partner with. There are some interpreters that work in house at health systems or health plans that were involved in the development of this bill, but almost none of the immigrant interpreters we work with were part of the process. I'd like to add um, that I see that the Min, Min Post article from February 2012 has been circulated today, and I'm happy to report that, to you that since that article was written two years ago, at least 15 new trainers for national 40-hour training courses required by our clients have trained several hundred interpreters. This article may be mis a misleading representation of today's interpreting environment. We estimate about 3,000 to 5,000 language interpreters in Minnesota serving medical patients in over 100 languages. While they may have been business owners or professionals in their homelands, as immigrants whose educational training isn't recognized in the U.S., many are forced to start over at the bottom of the economic ladder. The interpreters we worked with are worried about this bill. Some fear it will impose new costs on them to continue as interpreters without any expectation of increased earnings, just as the roster did, while others fear that they will be unable to continue to work as interpreters. Finally, I do want to thank Representative Allen for convening a meeting on Monday in which interpreters were given the opportunity to be heard by a representative of the HMOs and others who developed the bill. She was able to see firsthand the level of anxiety about the bill and need for participation by independent interpreters in this process. We appreciate the two amendments that were added to the bill based on our discussions. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, thanks for your patience. And my name is Lisa Brian Barr. I'm a um, national trainer of a recognized 40-hour training program called the Community Interpreter. Um, this course was designed for new interpreters as well as interpreters that have been working in the field for a long time. And the goal of this program is to um, review interpreting core of ethics, um, kind of develop skills and professional standards that will assist interpreters in performing their job. And I'm grateful to report to you tonight that um, over the last two years as a trainer, I've trained up to 200 interpreters as um, trained 40-hour interpreters in Minnesota. Um, I've witnessed also, as part of that training process, firsthand financial hardship that most interpreters have gone through. Being able to even pay the $50 registration fee for Minnesota last year has caused them a lot of um, financial hardship and they've had to miss meals and uh, miss paying for kids' activities to be able to do this on their part. The um, TCI course that I teach is offered in Washington, D.C. area for about $650. Um, even though I have discounted a course in Minnesota at a rate of $450, in addition to the discounted rate, I've also included an extra textbook in medical terminology, a free lunch and breakfast to encourage interpreters to stay focused and learn as we teach. And that class has not at all been very affordable at the same time for interpreters. Uh, we've had to be creative enough to work out in place. Some interpreters have taken six weeks to pay up their four hundred and fifty dollars. Some pay twenty five dollars per week, some pay fifty dollars per week. Some have taken up to three months to be able to just come up with four hundred dollars and they've had to forgo a lot of other things. The test is to get this for all training done. Okay, ma'am you're at two minutes already. Yeah. Do you want to stop and let someone uh, we'll be brief and come to it quickly. 
I am here to let you know that I also have five years of interpreting experience as a Madumu interpreter, a uh, real language. This bill will pose real financial difficulties for interpreters and it will work contrary to the um, proponents of um, Title VI, uh, that is part of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The goal of that act is to give um, limited English speaking patients more access to qualified interpreters and with all of these additional expenses that interpreters are not going to be able to afford. It will force them to leave the workforce and patients will not have interpreters at all and it will lead to a health emergency. I will step out. Thanks for that. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Chair and the members of the committee. Uh, my name again is Natasha Gellman. I'm speaking in two roles here. First, I am an agency owner. Second, I am a certified through the state of Washington medical interpreter and Supreme Court of Minnesota certified court interpreter. Uh, and I am a strong proponent of high standards. I've been involved in that since the early 90s. In 93, a similar bill was introduced here by Representative Clark, and I testified for the bill. And uh, however, there is a person here who, in the audience who can confirm that. However, in this particular bill, uh, there are several issues I strongly disagree with, and I'll stop on two points. First, the bill sets standards for Minnesota interpreters, but it does not detail how interpreters in other states that are used remotely by a phone or video will meet Minnesota standards. So it is putting Minnesota interpreters and businesses at disadvantage while giving non-Minnesota businesses and non-Minnesota interpreters uh, unfair advantage. So uh, I also think that if there is a Minnesota interpreter available for a language needed, Minnesota interpreter should be used instead of using somebody in California, Florida, or other 47 states uh, who would do that over the phone. Second, the bill does not appear to allow grandfathering of the interpreters who only work in the field. Typically, licensure bills do. If this bill does not allow grandfathering, the result will be to cause many interpreters currently working in the field to lose their jobs or to be forced to leave the profession. The existing pool will strongly decrease and access to health care interpreters will uh, be declined. I understand that also typically when the legislature is working on particular licensure, uh, the stakeholders are strongly involved. With this bill that appeared here, the amendment, uh, neither the business owners nor the interpreters were not involved enough. I know that many people put uh, hundreds of hours into that, but this particular amendment just appeared out of the blue. We were not to be aware of that until a couple of days before. So we would welcome an opportunity to further work with the board proponents to address the concern they talked about. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mohamed Alain. I don't think I will be using my minute and a half. Probably I'm going to confer to some of my colleagues. Uh, I'm a Somali interpreter who, and I, some of us have the TCI training and I'm even on the roster of Minnesota Court Interpreter Roster. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is some of us are way too much qualified for this job. And uh, at the same time, we do have the education, we do have, besides the, beside the high school requirement that they're trying to make it, we even have a college degree, but we're doing this as a part-time. And, um, and the, the logistical proposal, I know that that's much stringent than the Minnesota court, which doesn't require as many rules and regulations. And uh, even the Minnesota court doesn't have the stringent fees of $50 every year. I mean, we are on the roster, and uh, we don't renew it every year. It's voluntary. And um, at the same time, what, what I notice is that uh, even medical assistants can administer medication after only six weeks of training. 
So why are we being asked to, to go through with so many regulations that are driving professionals who are dedicated to help the, to help in their community in every way they can out of business? I mean, it's going to reduce the pool of the, you know of the qualified people. And I, I don't mind talking about quality, but I don't want us to be overburdened with a uh, with a lot of regulations. We end up we end up paying four hundred fifty dollars that we don't even have in our pockets. Some of us don't even make it as much money at all. And we have the expenses of car and transportation, insurance. If my car breaks down, I'm an independent contractor. Nobody's paying for me. Okay. So I really appreciate right. for the for the for the uh, for the possibility of talking here. But I want you to know the interpreter side. You know how it's going to affect the community and the, those guys working into the community. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And if he could come down. And are you on the list, sir? The person yes. that you are. Which one? And what is your name? Right. Jamal. Okay, we will get to you. Thank you very much. Welcome to the committee. Thank you, Madam Chair, for allowing me to testify on this important issue. My name is Ahmed Chair, and I am on the uh, core roster and I'm one of the very first to register on MDH roster, hoping to increase my income, but my experience shows otherwise. I work as an Arabic and French interpreter in various medical uh, care settings, such hospitals, clinics, and uh, family clinic, and uh, in-house calls. This position is very important for me, and it's an important task. I have received training and continued education in medical terminology and uh, entrepreneurial skills. Attended, I attended many workshops with AMSHA, Upper Midwest Translator Interpreter Association. Uh, although, to add to it, I work 40, 30 to 40 hours and more per week. Half of it goes for driving, for driving and back, not including the expenses and the cars repairs, the gas and the parking. Madam Chair, let me share something with you. Last year I made 23000 before tax. And I will be paying this tax 5000 plus the CPA fees. That give you an idea what kind of job and what kind of income we got. Now, uh, first, I'm concerned about this bill, which I only recently heard about it. I was not part of the group that developed this legislation, even though I am directly impacted by it. I have tried to be involved in the IG and I have a time living in the past. But as an independent contractor, I cannot afford to miss jobs in order to attend these meetings. And whenever I attend, my voice was never heard. I don't feel it is now, sir. Thank you for being here. Uh, also, I'm concerned with one provision. Uh, the, the, I'm afraid that these expenses uh, will, will fall uh, as a burden for the interpreter. Uh, for that purpose, which means uh, the better interpreters are less likely to remain as an independent contractor, will create a potential access issue for the patient we serve. I would like to conclude with French proverb. La raison du plus fort est toujours la meilleure. That's in French. In English, the reason of the most powerful always prevail. But I hope this evening, the reason of the week will prevail. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Sam. Madam Chair, members of the committee, my name is Indra Patel, and I was born in Kenya. I emigrated to the United States when I was 21 years old. I have been interpreting in Gujarati, Hindi, Swahili, and Urdu languages for the past seven years. I have received interpreter training through the Berlitz program in Washington, D.C., have an associate degree from Wilson College of Technology in London, England, and a bachelor's from University of Minnesota. Nonetheless, I tested in the language of Gujarati, my mother tongue, and did not pass to the rigorous exam. In the seven years I have been interpreting, I have loved doing what I do. Over the, over the past few years, the cost for me to be in business has increased while I am paid while I am paid, my, my pay has decreased because the reimbursement for interpreters have gone down. Access to patients on the fringes will be very limited when interpreters like myself no longer qualify 
to work in our field. Additionally, the power that the Commissioner and the Advisory Council scares me because there seems to be no checks and balances and the rules can change on us with no warning as they did when the voluntary roster became a condition for payment for services. Thank you for allowing me to participate and have my voice heard.